G-E-G. So I've been completely obsessing over this method for the past week. GEG is kind of like a hypothetical method that I came up with a while back. And basically the point is you solve the cube with half turns and then an alg and then half turns. And because of some weird cube theory stuff, the solutions end up being super, super, super short. And the reason the solutions are super short is because the algs are super short. You know, most of the algs are like like six, seven, or eight moves, and that's the general ballpark of like how long the algs are. I sent a proposal for this method in the 2x2 Discord server, and Jules Portners was kind enough to write some code and generate all the algs for it, which is really great. It turns out there actually weren't too many cases. There were only 466, which is about the same as LS. So if you wanted to solve the cube purely by doing half turns, and then an alg, and then half turns, you would only need to memorize 466 algs to cover every possible state. And these solutions are pretty good. Most of them get either move optimal or miss move optimal by a move or two. And this method can get even better just by learning alternate algs. While the pure GEG method is definitely something that can be developed further, at the moment it has a major problem, and that problem is how difficult it is. So to recognize GEG cases, you first have to find three anchor corners that are like sort of in HTR relative to each other. And then you need to like blind trace the remaining four corners. But instead of blind tracing into the solved state, you blind trace into an HTR state that follows the other three corners. And then like depending on what cycles the corners make, you know what case it is. And then you had to have to add additional parodies on top of that. And then there's also this this one weird corner twist parody that I can't still can't figure out and I don't understand it. Basically, the point is that tracing GEG is so difficult. There are so many parodies you have to trace, so many things you have to trace just to recognize what case it is. The other downside of GEG is that if you wanted to learn GEG, it would have to basically replace everything you've ever learned on 2x2. If you've learned CLL, forget that. If you've learned LS, forget that. All the work goes down the drain and you have to replace it with GEG. And that certainly is not ideal. And you know, it would be best if this method did not have that feature. However, it turns out that you can take the core principle of GEG, the core idea of GEG, and apply it to any ALG set that currently exists for 2x2. Let's go over to the desk and I'll show what I mean. This is an LS case. So, with LS, we have three kind of solved pieces, and then we have all the rest of them can be wherever. You can solve this LS case like this, where you insert the corner kind of wrong, and then you do double sledge to solve the cube. Now, if you learn LS, you can just do things like this. You can make three quarters of a layer, and you can do an alg, solve the cube, amazing. You can also do stuff like this, where you build like not three quarters of a layer, but three quarters of a face, sort of, and then you can do the same LS alg, and then you will end with something like R2F2R2. Here's the real kicker. You can also set up to something like this. So right now we don't have three solved pieces. We don't even have three of the same face, but we do have three corners who are kind of opposite or like kind of solved in HTR relative to each other. And if we have this, we can figure out an LS alg that we can do, and then we can finish with R2F2, so half turns. There are lots of advantages to this technique. The biggest advantage is that you don't have to make three quarters of a layer. You can make three pieces line up as long as they're like in HTR relative to each other, and that usually just doesn't take a lot of moves at all, and it's often pre-made. However, the downside to this is that you have to do pesky half turns at the end. Now here's where the GEG concepts come in. If we assume that we're going to be doing half turns after the alg, it doesn't need to preserve these three solved pieces like in LS. For example, the move optimal alg for this LS case is nine moves long. However, if you only want to get to HTR and you don't care about preserving these three pieces, then the move optimal alg is seven moves long. Although I'm sure in practice you would want to find an eight or nine mover that is a little bit more finger trickable. So the alg looks something like this. You hold it from this orientation with that in the back, and then you do this alg. And I'm sure there's also like a, a better orientation to, to hold that from too. So let's go back to this case where you do where you do the LS alg and then R2 F2. Or I mean, I'm sorry, F2R2. So instead of doing like the, the terrible 10 move LS alg, what you can do is you can do the seven mover and you can get basically the exact same thing. So you hold the corner back here and you can do um, the alg and then U2AUF. That's kind of nice. 
So that's the advantage of like GEGifying an Alex set. Number one, the setups are shorter because you're not like restricted to setting up an LS. And the algs are shorter too. The only downside is that you have to do half turns after. Although if you want to learn alternate algs, you can reduce the half turns. And of course, when you're one looking multiple solutions, you're only going to go with the solutions that don't have a lot of half turns at the end. I did a little bit of experimenting and I found an angle where you can sort of finger trick this alg, although I'm sure there's just like a better alg somewhere that, that it is, uh, is just a lot better. So you hold it from this angle and then you do the preo f and then you can just do the alg like this. Uh, yeah, like that and then R2 finish. You can also apply this kind of thing to any alg set for 2x2, whether it be CLL, EG1, EG2. A wonderful thing about this is that if you applied this concept to the EG method, um, then that method would be called GEGEG, -E which would be extremely funny. Anyways, I've generated some example solves with GEGLS, so basically like GEG plus LS. Note that these algs are not optimized for finger tricks at all. So a lot of these solutions have some pretty nasty finger tricks. These algs are just move optimal. But in practice, you'd want to generate some more finger trick friendly algs. Also, these solutions are not like the limit of what you can do with GEGLS. I'm sure you can find better solutions than these, but these are just the ones I found. Also, another note about these is that they're all from kind of the wrong orientation. So just bear with me, the algs that I generated were not from the correct orientation, so these are all just going to be weird. <laughs> so one solution you can do with this scramble is you can do an F to make this GEGLS, and then you can um, actually cancel into like a 10 move solution. So um, you can uh, do this alg. So it's very, very not finger trick optimized right now, but um, then you finish with U2R2F2 and that's a 10 move solution. So this is, th this is the better solution. So instead of making a GEGLS, you want to make a GEGCLL like this. Um, so we have that and then it's just soon and you can cancel into R2 at the end. So there's an eight move solution. Onto the second example. So you can do an F move to this GEGLS but the alg is not very good. The alg is a nine mover, so um, that's not super great. But what you can do is you can do an R move and a U move to make this, this GEGLS right here. And the alg is actually really nice. It's a six mover. And now just R2, F2 to finish. And that's a 10 move solution. And uh, you can actually execute it better like this. Like that, 10 mover. So in this scramble, there are a few different ways to make GEGLS in two moves, but the first one I checked gave a really good solution, and it was a nine mover. So what you do is you do FU to make this GEGLS on the right, and this alg isn't like particularly good, but it gives no half turns at the end, so here it is. And that's a nine mover. So probably the best way to finger trick this is to do a Z2, and then uh, do this. Um, and yeah, that... It's like fine to finger trick. Maybe there's a better alg out there, who knows. So this was probably the worst of all the solutions. So what you can do is you can do a U2. We already have a pre-made GEGLS here on red slash orange. And you can do this alg, which is not so great. And then just F2, U2 to finish. And the best way to finger trick this, I think is to hold it from this orientation and do an R2 and then F prime U F and then kind of like finish it like that. I tried to find a better alg for this case, but I couldn't. The best one I could find was um, was this, um, which is another solution. It's a 13 mover, but it's it's a little bit more finger trickable. Anyways, on to the next one. So there's a bunch of one move GEGLSs here. So like you can do you can do F prime to make GEGLS. You can do F to make GEGLS. You can do a U to make GEGLS, or you can do um, a U prime to make GEGLS here. The one that gave the 10 move solution was F to make GEGLS on, on this face. And then you just do the alg and then R2 finish. And then there's also this 11 mover, which is F prime to make this GEGLS. And then here's the alg. And now F2, R2, U2. Although I think the 10 mover is probably better. Again, this is another case where this probably is not the best alg because it's not super finger trick friendly. But the best way to finger trick it is probably from this angle, and you can do this. 
Anyways, on to the next scramble. So I looked at three things on this scramble and the last one worked out the best. So what you can do is you can do an R2 to make this GEGLS and then you can do an ALG and now just F2 R2 for a finish and that's an 11 mover. Um, there's also this other 11 mover, you can do a U2. The U2 makes this GEGLS on the back and then you can do this ALG and now just U2 R2 finish. But the 10 mover is that same U2 GEGLS but an alternate ALG. And this is actually a great showcase of why alternate algs are so good for this method. So what you can do is you can just do the U2 to make the GEGLS and then the alternate alg. And then the whole cube is solved. There's no half turns you have to do afterwards. The best way to execute this is probably from this angle. And you can do uh, U2 and kind of do it like that. And that's a 10 move solution. So that's the deal with GEGLS. When compared to GEG, this kind of fixes most of the problems. Number one, you don't have to trace parity or the other parity or the other parity. You don't have to knit, like trace the corners, the corner cycles, none of that. No corner cycles, no domino reduction corner subsets, none of that. It's just you recognize the case and you do the alg. I think I'll still try and develop the GEG method and try to find a way to make it traceable in under 15 seconds. Or maybe I'll try to just make an ALG generator for GEGLS. The problem is the current ALG generators that exist can't handle this method because, you know, you're trying to solve into an arbitrary unsolved state and that's kind of not what they're built to do. <laughs> but anyways, that is the GEGLS method, or technically you can apply this to any ALG set, so you can make GEGCLL, GEGTEG. -E oh boy, these acronyms are gonna get crazy. <laughs> what if you just like put a G in front of the ALG set name? Like a GLS, or like GTEG, -E oh, it's still awful. Anyways, I'm sure people can figure out some way to name this method without it sounding awful. <laughs> oh, one thing I forgot to mention is recognition. So I haven't like completely figured out recognition yet. I don't imagine it will be too difficult. There's nothing you need to trace. You just need to like look at it and figure out what the 